methods of mind and perception control and now increasingly they are technological. Um, everything in our reality is a frequency. Everything. Thoughts are frequencies. Emotions are frequencies. And different emotions, whether it's joy or whether it's depression, are different frequencies. The human brain works in a certain frequency band and processes information in a certain frequency band. Therefore, if you can broadcast frequencies and information in those frequencies within the frequency band that the human mind interacts with reality, then you can completely scramble them or implant thoughts and perceptions that people think are their own. You know, uh, different emotions like, uh, like uh, a violent protest, that is a frequency. People getting mass agitated, mass, uh, in mass states of fear. These are all frequencies. And if you can broadcast frequencies um, uh, 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 in, in a community or in, a, in an area, um, those that um, pick up those frequencies, it's what they call entrainment, where the, the external frequency starts making the brain entrain with it, lock into it, and therefore respond to it. You can create mass hysteria, you can make, uh, create mass fear. This is a story um, about what happened in 1991 in um, in the war against Iraq, the first one, the first uh, Gulf War, if you like. Uh, it's a story um, uh, talking about um, uh, a revelation in 1991 of high-tech psychological warfare arriving in the Middle East. It describes a U.S. psychological operation, psych psyops, uh, um, tactic directed against Iraqi troops in Kuwait. Uh, during Operation Desert Storm. Uh, the manoeuvre, it says, consisted of a system in which subliminal, below threshold, you can't hear it, you're not aware of it, but it's going in the subconscious, in which subliminal mind-altering technology was carried on standard radio frequency broadcasts. The US PSYOPs team set up its own portable FM transmitter and transmitted a sophisticated electronic system to speak directly to the mind of the listener, to alter and entrain his brain waves, to manipulate his brain's EEG patterns, and artificially implant negative emotional states, feelings of fear, anxiety, despair, and hopelessness. And this subliminal system um, doesn't, it says, just tell a person to feel an emotion. It makes them feel it. It implants that emotion in their minds because they're broadcasting the frequency of that emotion, which um, gets the body to, to manifest that emotion. Instead of the emotion coming from, for if you like, within the person's mind and triggering that reaction, instead it's externally done and triggers the same reaction. And they did this to Iraqi troops. They broadcast this stuff to Iraqi troops. And what happened? There was a mass surrender of Iraqi troops. It's called Project Solo, apparently. Now, are we so naive as to believe that's not being used on the general population to bring about reactions, responses and behaviour from the from the target population? Of course they are. And when you look therefore at this now gathering and fantastic already grid of transmitter towers um, 
of of Wi-Fi, of uh, the smart meters, the the Tetra system, which uh, is the emergency services communication system in Britain and similar ones around um, around the world. These are frequencies being broadcast into the environment, and when you uh, when you research this uh, deeply and in great detail over a long period of time, you find that these various forms of frequency transmission are not only impacting on brainwave activity and emotional states in the population. That's why people that live next to some of these towers get depression and many other psychological and um, physical traits as a result. But these transmitters are actually part of the same grid. They're talking to each other. All this smart technology is communicating with each other. Smart this, smart that, smart the other. And we've really got to start understanding and stop being naive and appreciate the scale on which human perception now in all these multiple, multiple ways is being targeted so that we think and therefore act the way that suits this global agenda of human control. Another aspect of this um, is drugs. Uh, I mean, children today are the most drugged uh, child population in human history. Psychological drugs, mind-changing drugs, Ritalin and all these others. And there was an article that's um, recently been produced by a, a, a journalist uh, that I've, I've known for a long time in California called John Rappaport. And um, it's a terrific uh, expose of the scale of drug and mind manipulation in general, uh, manipulation that's going on in the colleges of the United States. He reveals that 25% of college students in America have been treated for some type of mental or psychological disorder or what is perceived to be that. And as a result, the drugs are handed out like confetti. Then the impact of the drugs on the psychology of the student, the behavior and perceptions of the student, um, then changes their uh, their perceptions and their behavior even more. And instead of the psychiatrists saying, well, that's the effect of the drug, they're giving another psychological um, name, another uh, psychological illness to what the drugs are causing. And so the spiral goes on. And it's not just drugs that are used um, to mind manipulate uh, students. There are many other techniques, but drugs are, are, are very central to much of it. And so we can now start to understand where this extraordinary, what I would perceive as insanity, is going on in universities with um, students becoming, not all of them, some, some of them are seeing through it, but I mean very large numbers, are becoming professional victims who need safe spaces where no one can say anything that might upset them, where, where speakers coming to universities are deplatformed, in other words, censored, stop from speaking because they might say something that might upset someone. It's extraordinary the levels to which this is happening now under the uh, ludicrous uh, 
label of political correctness. Extraordinary. And what happens when you become a victim? What happens when you become uh, what, what people are um, dubbing a snowflake? You look to authority to protect you from what you've been manipulated to fear and feel a victim of. And so you demand that Big Brother imposes itself even more to censor the free flow of information and to stop people doing anything of any significance that would in any way challenge this system um, of control. I mean, in, in Britain this week, we've had a, um, a theatre saying that it's going to um, issue trigger warnings uh, that something uh, coming up in the play might upset people. And that's the point. I've mentioned it already. When um, they put people that like in MK Ultra under these um, forms of very extreme mind control using these compartments called altars. In the parlance, the word, phrase, whatever, to open a back altar is called a trigger. That's, that's mind control parlance. I've been writing about it for 20 years and more about this whole thing of the trigger that brings the other compartment, the other personality uh, to the person's conscious mind. They're actually using mind control parlance now in the way that they're talking about um, what's happening in uh, universities and, and ev virtually everywhere else that people might be triggered it's very appropriate because they're under forms of mind control and it's getting more and more extreme I mean when you reach the point where the University of Glasgow is giving trigger warnings to theology students that something about the crucifixion might upset them. I mean, where do we go? A lot further, I'll tell you, if we let it happen. Um, this is... Um, this is uh, one or two things um, on that same theme. Uh, warnings at this university, uh, trigger warnings, are also given to veterinary students who work with dead animals. Well, don't be a vet then. What are you doing studying as a vet? If that's too upsetting for you, do something else. And those studying contemporary society who will be discussing illness and violence. Well, then don't study it. And how do you think you're going to study contemporary society without discussing illness and violence? Students of forensic science at Strathclyde University in Glasgow are given a verbal warning at the beginning of some lectures where sensitive images involving blood patterns, crime scenes and bodies, etc. are in the presentation. Well, if that's too much for you, what are you doing studying forensic science? A trigger warning for a gender studies course at Stirling University says we cannot anticipate or exclude the possibility that you may encounter material which is triggering, i.e. which can trigger a negative reaction. Ooh, mustn't have them. And we urge that you take all necessary precautions to look after yourself in and around the programme. They are teaching people to be victims. They are teaching people to be generation jelly. And students are told, you can, of course, um, leave a class at any time, children. Teenagers, I thought. Little girls and boys. Can I say little girls and boys anymore? I'm not sure I can. 
don't give a shit. Students are told, you can of course, leave a class at any time should you need to, but please check in later that day to let us know how you are. Oh, theology student, are you, um, are you okay? We're talking about the crucifixion. Are you alright now? Do you like a pill? Unbelievable. And that mentality is going out now, more and more, year after year, to run the frickin' system. Do you know when I was travelling in Australia last year, um, on the worldwide Wake Up Speaking tour, came across a, an article about an Australian school that had banned applause in case there's anyone in the audience that is sensitive to noise. Now, if anyone wants confirmation of the scale of mind control and perception manipulation that is possible, I rest my case. And so, this psychological fascism, because that's what the mind control is, can be seen in the reaction to Trump in America. I'm no supporter of Trump. You know, I, I, the whole point I've been making all along is look at a system that gives you a choice between Clinton and Trump. That's where the focus should be. But instead, people really caught in the left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, as if Clinton is left in their perception of left. I mean, oh... Odd. Um, but the response and the reaction to Trump uh, in, in, in its extreme way, where people are saying they need therapy or whatever, is classic mind control. I mean, what's happening with Trump? And, I, you know, like I say, I'm no supporter of Trump. Huh? He's another expression of the swamp claiming to be draining it but the way that the response has played out when you observe it this is people being told how to react being told to do this to be told to do that in response to trump being president when you know one of the people behind that this guy called george soros who is, is one of the great manipulators of, for instance, protest. He was, his network was behind the fake Arab Spring, for instance. And now they're doing it in America. And people just go along with it. People are, are on the progressive um, side, uh, many of whom in the universities are part of this political correct mafia, and this safe space, shrinking violet generation jelly. They go on year after year about the, the, the corporate media and you can't believe the media. And now they're allowing the corporate media to dictate their perceptions and dictate their actions. It's, it's pathetic uh, beyond words. And, and as I've been saying, you know, for decades now, and I mentioned it earlier, you can't control billions of people physically. They're trying to do that more and more with this global surveillance state, but you can't do it all. You've got to control their minds and perceptions, and you've got to be able to um, get them to perceive, believe, and act in a way that suits you. And therefore, when you, when you break that down, the foundation of mass human control not only is, but can only be mind control, perception and emotional control. 
And we need to take our minds back. Never mind walking down the street waving a banner that's going to change nothing. Take your mind back. Question everything. No matter what the source is, question it. Ask, why do I believe this? Where did my perception of this come from? Where did my perception of that come from? And if you chart it back and follow it back and track it back, you'll invariably find it didn't come from you at all. It was a perception. It was an image. Not least through the repetition of the same alleged fact and assumption. And, you know, there's another area of this mind control that, that people completely miss. And that's something called familiarity. Once something enters your concept of the familiar, it becomes then the how things are. And once the familiar becomes the how things are, it's not questioned anymore. It's just accepted. This is how things are. Everyone knows that, mate. We have to start questioning everything. Right down to the very foundations of who we are, what life is, what this reality is. And what the game is in terms of what's happening in the world. Question everything. Because if we don't, if we, if we go on having our perceptions externally downloaded to us, 